because honestly, it, do, it doesn't just go to when you're trying to understand your audience. It's with how you do everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways that you can make sure that you're including empathy um, in your brand is by understanding that, you know, though data is important, which it is extremely important. In our book, we don't put data over people. People come first and data second. And that's an important factor because, like I said, while data is important, you know, data is only as good as the person who's analyzing it is using it to create strategy. And so you want to make sure that you're approaching things from a human lens, from a human perspective, and making sure that you always want to, one, have boundaries in place, but make sure that you're looking at things from a human perspective. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Welcome back to the Black to Business Podcast. This week, we have an extra special guest joining us to talk all about how to create a brand that connects with your audience. Our guest today is Ms. Diamond Spikes, a creative entrepreneur and branding medium who has helped over 70 D2C direct-to-consumer brands connect deeply with their audiences. Diamond believes that at the heart of any great brand is authenticity and that branding mirrors how we develop, maintain, and deepen relationships with one another as human beings. As the owner of an award-winning branding agency, DS Creative Design Studio, Diamond has a wealth of experience in helping businesses tap into their unique essence and create a brand that resonates with their audience. In this episode, Diamond will be sharing her insights on why having a brand that resonates with your audience is crucial for any business and the consequences of not doing so. She'll be discussing how to identify your audience and create a brand that reflects their personalities just as human beings have unique personalities. Diamond will also share some examples of brands that have successfully connected with their audience and how you can learn from them. Diamond will also be sharing tips on how to increase your revenue by being consistent and putting the consumer at the center of your brand story. As someone with over 10 years of experience as an entrepreneur and growing multiple multi-six-figure brands, Diamond knows what it takes to create a brand that connects. So get ready to learn how to create a brand that connects with your audience. Let's dive in. Excited to have you on the show. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So before we dive in, I always like to get a little background about who we're speaking with. So if you could just tell my audience a little bit about who you are, what is it that you do in your business and kind of how did you get where you are today? Sure, sure. So hey, everybody. Um, (laughs) My name is Diamond Spikes. Um, I am the CEO and creative director of DS Creative Design Studio. And we are an award-winning black and woman-owned branding studio based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Um, We specialize in basically assisting high six and seven-figure DDC brands, like navigate this space that we've coined as the mom and papa sex. But, um, you know, we pretty much recognize the challenges faced by small businesses um, that are making a really big splash on social and with their online communities. And so we want to help them. Um, level up to the next level to becoming true national brand powerhouses. Love it. And Diamond, what does DDC mean? So D2C stands for direct to consumer. Okay. Um, And that's basically like, you know, product-based businesses, clothing, think of food and beverage, beauty, things of that nature. Got it. Perfect. So today's conversation is all about how to create a brand that connects because you've worked with some powerful brands. So we want to share with our audience how to get on that level and connect with their audience. First, I want to talk about the importance of creating a brand that resonates with your audience. So can you start by explaining like why it's important for businesses to create a brand that resonates with their audience? Yeah, for sure. So It's super important for businesses to create a brand that resonates because, I mean, at the end of the day, having a brand, that is one of the sole reasons for a brand to exist. And that is to connect with people. Um, Brands have human personalities um, and they're given human characteristics because from a psychological perspective, when we look at branding and what its purpose is, Branding mirrors the way we connect with one another. So if Mm -hmm. me and you, for example, we see each other, 
we realize that we might have some commonalities and we want to develop a relationship, there are mm-hmm. going to be certain characteristics that you are going to look in and at me for and vice versa. And the way that, you know, we build our relationship is going to be based around those values, those beliefs, how we consistently interact with each other, how we consistently show up for one another. And brands have to take that same approach when it comes to um, having a brand and making sure that it connects with the audience because you you need to know them. You have to mm-hmm. understand them. You have to know their pain points. You have to understand, you know, what they like, what they don't like, what they do, how they are as people. And that helps the brand be able to intimately know them and intimately understand the challenges that they face and be able to really put the, the consumer in the center of the story that is being told about the brand and the solution that it provides. And also it helps, you know, the, the customer be able to truly connect, which then, um, you know, that's when we start talking about things like brand loyalty um, mm-hmm. and equity and things like that, because you're able to create that connection with them that lasts, that allows them to want to stay. Mm, I love that. Such a thorough answer. I love it. So Thank this you. is already, you're welcome. This is already starting <laughs> on fire. I love it. So that's what we like to do. Break it down. See how Diamond did that, y'all? Okay. <laughs> so Diamond, like when it comes to some examples of brands who are doing it right, like who are some successful brands maybe that you've worked with or that you see that have done it successfully when it comes to connecting with their audience? So I'm going to actually... All of my clients do a really good job with mm-hmm. that, but I'm going to um, start with Hoop Mob. I don't know if you've heard of Hoop Mob, no. um, but Hoop Mob is a really, really, really dope um, accessories brand. And it started obviously with hoops, um, but it's, it's a black owned, woman owned brand. Um, mm-hmm. And we recently completed a rebrand with them not too long ago. But um, even before we came along, they were already doing an excellent job with cultivating community. Um, And that's honestly one of the things that especially black and brown businesses that start on social and are very much so growing and based on social that they're really good at. They're really good at cultivating community um, and building these spaces where they're able to really connect with the people who are following them um, and really build massive followings of people who really love, you know, who they are and what they're doing. So Hoop Mob is definitely one of those brands. Um, mm-hmm. The owner is very much involved with the, the obviously the day-to-day access of the business and also even interacting with um, the customers and potential customers. Every single week she's on Instagram. She does live. She's on there talking to them. She um, does like live uh, selling um, equivalent to like being on QVC. Like she does that, but she does it in a way where it's like, you know, these are my people, you know, like you're my home girl, you're my auntie, like you're my sister, like she gives mm-hmm. that type of energy, but that's the same energy of the brand. So it's, con- it's, you know, it's a consistent experience across, you know, the way the owner is interacting with the people on social, the way the social team is interacting with the people on social, the way emails come, the way people are interacting with it on Facebook, like it's all a consistent experience, which, you know, allows, um, the customers to really love who owns the company, mm-hmm. own, uh, love the company itself, and, you know, want to continue to support. You know, they have great products. The earrings are super cute. I have earrings myself, of course. I had to buy, <laughs> buy me some of <laughs> it. So, you know, it's a it's a really great um, brand, and they, they, they've done a really um, good job with continuing to um, develop those relationships because the owner herself, she is a black woman. She understands, you know, the significance of accessories to black women. Um, mm-hmm. and she also understands, you know, what it has meant throughout time for us to be deemed like, you know, inappropriate for looking certain ways or wearing, wearing certain mm-hmm. things, um, and wanting women to feel comfortable in their skin and comfortable with what they decide to wear on their bodies as far as accessories. I mean, having a community that fully supports that and, you know, wants you to show up as your best self and as your cutest self. Yeah. It's it's really, really dope. And we had a great time, like, you know, helping them with their brand strategy, getting those things ironed out so that it was very clear, even though, you know, subconsciously they kind of had that together already Mm -hmm. when it comes, when it came to them wanting to, move forward and level up and be able to create partnerships and things of that nature and make sure that their copy and messaging was clear. Um, 
you know, the brand strategy portion of what we did allowed them to have like a very clear and concise, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is who we do it for. And this is what we stand for. I love that. And I love that you said like that community aspect, because I do find like as black people, of course, we love that. And right. that's the thing that we can leverage in our businesses, connecting with one another, building the audience. I love that. Now, Diamond, with everything, it takes work. Um, We know the importance of doing this, but I also want to talk to my audience about the consequences of choosing to ignore doing this. So what are some of the consequences of not having a brand that connects with your audience? Like, what can happen? So there are real life consequences. Um, One of the many things is that, one, you won't make any money. Right. (laughs) Um. And it will be more difficult for you to make money. It will be more difficult for you to grow. Um, at the end of the day, business businesses are run f- by people and they are for people. So in order for you to make money, you're going to have to serve somebody. And that's going to have to you know, come by way of you figuring out what that looks like for somebody else. Um, and even if that is, you know, you using yourself as a, uh, not a case study, but like, you know, you fixing the issue for yourself and realizing that you're not the only problem, you know, you're not the only person with this problem. And then, you know, making it something that's now you're turning into a business and is available to other people, but there are real ramifications behind not taking it seriously. You know, real data in the statistics, they say, if you do not put the time and energy behind, you know, knowing exactly who your audience is, um, showing up in the ways that are, you know, important for you to show up, it's going to cost you money in the long run. Even from a marketing perspective, you end up spending more marketing dollars. Whereas if you understand, have the proper depth of understanding who your audience is, you will save money. On average, there's 23% of revenue that you can have an increase of if you just show up consistently. Mm. Just by showing up consistently, your revenue can increase by 23%. 23% is a lot. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a, that's a real thing that people don't realize along with the many other things is that you really just have to take that stuff seriously. It's nothing that you want to play with. And I even encourage people to, you know, do it in the beginning. Like, don't, I know they say like, you know, don't like, you know, feel like you got to walk on pins and needles to start. Yes, Mm -hmm. do start, but make sure that, you know, while you're starting, you're getting these things in place so that you don't have to play catch up Mm -hmm. Um, because sometimes when businesses grow faster than, you know, what they can handle and things Mm -hmm. catch up to them, they have to go back and do those things anyway. Mm. I always say you're going to either pay on the front end or the back end. So you're going to pay. So you might as well do it in early stages. So I love that advice. Yeah. And Diamond, one of the things that you mentioned is finding your target audience. Like how do you, what are some tips for businesses on how to identify who their audience is and try to create that brand that resonates with them? Great question. So with finding out who your target audience is, it is going to take you, first of all, understanding the product or the service. Um, What is it exactly that you're offering and who is the person that this is a solution for? Um, And that's really the place that you want to start at. Um, And like I said, most people, they do start with themselves. Like um, let's say if I had a, if I had eczema and these other skin conditions and I created a you know, something that worked for me. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not the only person out here with eczema. There's plenty of other people out here with eczema, skin conditions. I know that I can create something for them as well. I can use myself as a baseline to start. It's like, obviously, okay, if I'm making these skin um, products that are used to help make skin healthier, make it clearer, um, make it moisturized and, you know, keep it from, having these breakouts with eczema and different things like that. I know obviously that it's going to be towards people who are experiencing those things. And Mm -hmm. maybe if I'm using natural products, it's going to be for people who are um, more geared towards holistic healing, who are Mm -hmm. more geared geared towards um, a healthier type of lifestyle or, you know, plant-based type of uh, living. Um, But you have to think along those lines with thinking like, okay, what are the type of people who would actually buy this product? Mm-hmm. And you have, you know, that's that's literally the place that you start. Who are the people who will buy this product? 
Mm-hmm. And then once you can like, you know, find a, a baseline of who this person is, then you can get deeper into looking at um, what do these people do on the day to day basis? What are they like as people? What type of families do they have? What type of jobs do they work? What type of cars do they drive? You know, what type of things do they indulge in outside of what I'm selling to them? And one another thing that people can actually do is look at, look at your competitors Mm-hmm. If you have a competitor who is selling something similar, look at their audience. Just take a look. See what their followers, um, see who they are. Click on somebody's profile. Click on a few of their profiles. Just go through and look at these people and see how they are. See what they do. See what they post about. See what they engage in. You know, really get a good gauge of the people who are buying things that are specifically in your market. Love that. And one of the things I love a good old framework. So one of the things you focus on is helping brands evolve and expand their brands through three distinct categories of work. So can you walk us through these categories and the processes? Sure. So we have brand evaluation, um, brand expression and brand execution. Those are the three main. And we actually have like a sub Mm -hmm. one, (laughs) which is empathic, but I'm going to just start with the the three. So Mm -hmm. with those three, they kind of just break up the full branding process. Within brand evaluation, that's where you're doing your research. That's when you're doing your auditing, seeing exactly, you know, where this brand is, where the company is or where we are. What are we what are we doing? What are we starting with? What are we trying to do? You have your beginning pieces of information that you get from your audit. You go into research. This is when you're you're looking at your competitors. You're looking at um, trying to figure out your target audience. You're doing research to understand how you differentiate in the market so that you understand how to position yourself. You know, looking at your beliefs and values, understanding what that looks like. You know, that includes you and whoever you're in business with sitting down and trying to figure out, you know, like what, what do we really stand for? You know, even with like your vision, mission, vision being, you know, in, at the end of the day, at the end of all of this, when it's said and done and we're the biggest brand in the world in our market, what is that supposed to look like from a vision standpoint? And your mission being when we are day to day doing things, what is our commitment to getting to that vision? What does that look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and so coming, coming up with all of those things, doing the research, getting things down on paper to be clear and concrete, the messaging, all of those things, tone, personality, things of that nature. Um, that is brand evaluation. Then we move on to brand expression. That's when we get into the brand's identity. So that's when you start looking at um, mood boards. That's when you start looking at logos or logo suites. That's when you start looking at patterns, textures, fonts, font families, style guides, All the things that are necessary, approved imagery, all the things that are necessary to actually present your brand, but the things that will be used as identifiers, um, as an entire system um, for your brand. And then we have the brand execution portion, which, you know, is how the brand shows up in the world, Mm -hmm. the final piece of it. So that's your website, that's your packaging, that's your social media content, that's your ads, that's your billboards, that's all of the physical things. That's your merchandising. If you're in a store, that's your, you know, your target um, merchandising display. That's your Walmart merchandising display. Those are all of the things, including how you talk to your audience, what the messaging sounds like, what it feels like, email, text, all of that. So those are the three sections. Love it. And one of the things you mentioned also is the sub subsection, which is bringing me to my next question, uh, talking about the role that empathy plays in branding. So the fact that you focus on empathic branding, can you explain like what this means and the role that empathy plays in branding? For sure. So people don't normally think about it in this way, but in order for you to really brand something, you have to have an empathic lens anyway, because the the whole point of it is for you to be able to relate to and connect with people. And you cannot do that without empathy. Um, And empathy is one of the things that from a very deep level I was born with. And it's something that I see for me as a superpower. And it's something that I implement, um, implement as a value in our company 
Um, and it's, you know, it's something that we use and focus on with our clients in terms of brand strategy. Empathy is one of those things where you can get deep, very deep into the psychographics of your consumer, getting so deep to the point where it's like, you know, when they're interacting with your brand, when they're seeing the content or interacting with the emails or whatever the case may be, they just feel so seen, so heard that it's scary. And that's the type of, you know, that's the type of impact you want to, you want to have on people. You want them to be able to connect. You want them to Mm -hmm. feel like, dang, I feel so seen right now. Like, dang, like this is literally it. Or dang, like this is literally me. Mm -hmm. That's the type of effect that you want to have, but you can't do it without really wanting to under truly understand what they're experiencing, what they go through, who they are, um, and having that that delicate fine tooth brush and comb to want to go through and um, make sure you understand the nooks and crannies of these people. Mm. Okay. And what would you say are some ways that business owners can look to incorporate empathy in their branding strategy? So I think one of the ways, because honestly, it, do, it doesn't just go to when you're trying to understand your audience is with how you do everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that you can make sure that you're including empathy um, in your brand is by understanding that, you know, though data is important, which it is extremely important. In our book, we don't put data over people. People come first and data second. And that's an important factor because like I said, while data is important, you know, data is only as good as the person who's analyzing it is using it to create strategy. And so you want to make sure that you're approaching things from a human lens, from a human perspective, and making sure that you always want to, one, have boundaries in place, but make sure that you're looking at things from a human perspective. Obviously, customers are not always right. (laughs) We Mm -hmm. all know that. Mm -hmm. And also, there are times where, you know, we aren't right. As business owners, and we're, again, we're all people. Businesses are ran by people for other people. So we have mm-hmm. to keep those things in mind and, you know, be willing to be honest, transparent, upfront. Um, those are actually things that, you know, consumers are expecting of brands and businesses. That's how you build more trust by being honest and transparent. So, you know, just making sure that you do that on the, on the front and the back end, being honest and transparent with your customers with the people who are working with you um, and just maintaining that integrity throughout the brand building process aside, you know, being meticulous about understanding who these people are that you're serving, um, but may also making sure that that is a part of every touch point, mm-hmm. you know, that people are experiencing the brand, which is, you know, the main, the main thing. Got it. I love that too. People over data. Love it. Got it. Okay. So what are some, or who would, who comes to mind when you think of brands that are effectively using this when it comes to empathy in their branding or their business? Ooh, baby. So, (laughs) (laughs) um, I think Dove Mm -hmm. does amazingly with it. Um, who else does really good? I think Dove does great. I think Apple does a really good job. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a brand of pianos that I don't remember <laughs> what it is, but they also do a really good job with it, mm-hmm. um, especially in their marketing. Like it's just, ugh, just, just gets me in my feels every time. Aww. But um, just, I'm just pinpoint Dove. Um, but thinking about Dove, and honestly, I've been talking to my husband and a few other people about it. Dove does, a, does an extremely good job with um, bringing their customer and putting them in the center as the protagonist of the story that they're telling, which Mm is a very important part. Um, And that's part of that empathy. Like you want, you want them to be able to see themselves in the story that's being told Um, less of the, this is us and this is us and what we do and more of this is you fitting into that story and how you using what we um, have can aid you in getting to where you're trying to get to. (sighs) But yeah, Dove, they're, they're really, really, really amazing. And I love how um, with the content that they create and the, the campaigns that they have, they use real people and they create scenarios that are, you know, important societal, uh, societal and social impact stories that are relevant to their audience. And they drive it home every single time. Like I, I'm quite sure like almost every time I've seen a Dove commercial, 
that's relative to one of their campaigns that they're pushing, um, even their uh, the extended video campaigns that they have that are like available on YouTube, I always end up crying because they're they're so strong, um, and they always hit struck a chord um, mm-hmm. with me in terms of you know seeing those specific things that we've all struggled with, um, and then they shed light on them and show the the normalcy of one those experiences and two that you know, even though you're experiencing those experiences does not mean that, you know, you aren't beautiful or, you know, you aren't deserving. Um, and I think they do an excellent job of, you know, getting into the emotions of the, of their consumer. Certainly. Yeah. When I think of Dove too, I think of like care and just the warmth. So yeah, I can right. definitely see that. And now into the importance of being a specialist and not a generalist for succeeding. You kind of touched on niching down a little bit earlier, but I want to talk about how important it is for businesses, especially when it comes to branding, to not try to be everything and specialize um, riches in the niches. What would you say? I definitely agree to to niche. I think it's important to have a focus. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when it comes to brands, like that's the the point is to have a focus. Um, you can't do everything. You're not Walmart. You're not Target. And even then, Walmart has a niche. Target has a niche. It may seem like they're for everybody, but they're not. And for brands, especially new brands that are budding and trying to come up, I think it's important to have a specific focus and be able to focus hard on the product that you have and who that product is for. Um, and niching allows you to have more empathy because you're able to hone in on a specific person who's experiencing a specific thing. That's one of the reasons why a brand like God is Dope is able to scale and go viral based off of one T-shirt because they had a niche that was very specific and they stuck to that and, you know, went to the moon with it. And niching allows you to go vertical, meaning you, you get more visibility and you get it faster when you niche. And then once you have niched and you've grown and all these things, then you can expand. And of course, expansion happens over time. But I definitely don't ever suggest that anybody start out um, with a whole bunch of stuff because there there are things that you have to learn along the way. um, And it's going to make more sense for you to start out with a product or two or three that go along with, you know, one another and to focus on those, those only focus on the specific people that they are for, take that and drive growth and, you know, keep iterating, rinse and repeating that. And, you know, the whole thing like there are riches and niches is is literally just that, like Mm -hmm. a generalist doctor makes less than a heart surgeon. And that's just what it is. (laughs) Like a heart surgeon doesn't doesn't know how to do brain surgery, but it doesn't matter because they're a heart surgeon and they fix hearts, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So and another thing is that you definitely don't want people to think that because uh, I know a lot of people do experience it where they feel that, you know, oh, man, if I if I niche, then, you know, I'm be I'm be not I'm not going to be able to make as much money. And that's far from the truth. The reality is there is money in every niche. Um, there is an ample amount of people um, in every niche. It's just a matter of you being able to sit down focus on a specific product and specific people and go with that. Mm. I think also I want to ask because I feel like we're in this space where I'm seeing people who are like um, multi-hyphenated or they have multiple things that they're passionate about. So it's hard for people to kind of like focus sometimes on, you know, this thing. And you spoke earlier about that consistency piece. So what would you say to somebody who's like, I have all of these things in my business. Uh, I have too many options. Now I need to figure out, okay, how do I narrow it down to become that specialist? is to become known for that thing? Like, how do you decide where you're going to narrow it down to? Um, Sometimes, honestly, it just boils down to you making the decision. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't, it's hard for them to make a decision just because they want the decision to be the right decision. And the reality is if you're good at multiple things, anything you choose will be the right decision. Um, In some instances, it is that. And Mm -hmm. in other instances, it's more relative to, you know, what is going to make the most sense for you? And you will have to personally create, you know, your um, decision making factors. Like, let's say me, I'm a multi-hyphenate. Mm-hmm. I'm a creative. 
I am a business owner. Um, I've done graphic design, photography, modeling, had a hair company. I was a hairstylist, all the things, right? And so there came a point where in order for me to grow this branding agency, I had to say, okay, I'm going to put this to the side so that I can focus on this. But you just have to be definitive about making the decision and figure out, you know, exactly what your goals are and what you want to do. And for me, it made sense because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be known um, and seen as a creative entrepreneur. And so I said, I'm going to put in the strategy to do that. And I'm going to put everything else on the back burner so that I can do that. Because the reality is you need to you need to grow something to mm-hmm. a good to a good space that will allow you to do the other things um, because you don't want your time to be spread too thin. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when, you know, people start walking around like, dang, I feel like I'm not making any progress. And it's not that you're not making progress. It's that the progress is so slow because you're focusing on so many different things. Certainly. So pick something, grow that, work with that, and then, you know, start to implement the other things later. Got it. Diamond, this has been amazing. Um, I want to kind of take, make everything like a full circle. So for anyone who's listening, anything we haven't discussed, like, are there anything additional that you would say that listeners who are looking to create a brand that could connect with their audience should know? All I got to say is do your, do your research first. Like don't just hop in um, thinking that, Oh, I got this amazing product and people are going to like it. You you know that in theory. You don't know that for real. Do <laughs> do your market research. Again, go and look and see what other types of brands are doing what you're doing. Look at their people. Um, you know, look at the complaints. Look at look at all of that stuff. You have to do market research. That's something, another thing that I realized about brands that are really budding and growing on the online space or starting is that people are not doing that type of groundwork and other types of businesses are doing that groundwork, um, Mm -hmm. which is shown in how they're able to scale successfully quickly. You know, if you want to start a brand or whatever, just make, make sure you do your research first. Um, Make sure the name that you're trying to get is not a name that somebody else already has. Make sure, you know, that the products you have has a, has a different, a difference. It makes a difference. It's not like everybody else's. Make sure the brand, same thing with that. You just want to make sure that what you're doing has a specific place in the market that is not already filled. Mm-hmm. Know that. And can you share any additional um, or some resources or tools that you would recommend for listeners who are looking to improve their branding? Um, for sure. Uh, I mean, shameless plug, but we have some digital resources on our online store. They're not expensive um, and we don't make them expensive because we want people to be able to get what they need. Um, mm-hmm. But we have some digital resources that can help people. We have ebooks, all types of stuff. We also have a blog. Go to our blog, read. Um, there are outside of us ample, you know, branding professionals um, that give advice um, in, in things all the time. But your biggest resource is going to be the internet for you to be able to do research mm-hmm. um, and make sure that you are getting all the information that you need to make the right decisions. But yeah, in terms of like knowing how to maneuver and, and knowing how to move through the process, literally we have a few good resources on our site. And like I said, there are ample other branding professionals out there and granted other branding professionals might not, talk in the same sense of what I'm the stuff that I'm talking about right now. Cause a lot, I know a lot of uh, branding professionals are more heavily focused on the design mm-hmm. portions, but yeah, y'all going out there and uh, be great. <laughs> well, let's get back to um, the work that you're doing. Perfect segue. So how is DS creative design studio helping entrepreneurs and small business owners with the evolution and expansion of their brand? So discussing like more of your offerings and your process. To working with you. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I'd love to talk about that. So we have a few different things that we do. Our most like prominent service is our our comprehensive branding partnership. And with that, we're basically working with brands who are trying to go to the next level. And this specific service is uh for like high six, seven figure plus brands who are ready to go to the next level. 
they need a full rebrand, include like, you know, brand strategy, the brand identity, you know, brand campaigns, launch, web, all of those things, including packaging and things of that nature. Um, part of a retainer is baked into that so that we make sure that, you know, moving into their new branding, that they have a smooth transition and all of those types of things and that they're able to, we're able to transition out and, you know, their team can take over. So we have that, of course, and that has a mid five to six figure um, investment. We have an additional service where um, people in brands can actually hire me for 30 days as like um, their chief branding officer slash, you know, brand consultant. And I come in and help them turn their brands around in 30 days. Um, That is a 10K service. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, we have our retainer, which is a bespoke retainer, meaning that um, we tailor it to the client. Um, Mm -hmm. But it only includes like organic social email, things of that nature, the things that are necessarily that that we believe are necessary to help brands scale and grow organically. And obviously also includes um, brand consulting assets, you know, just making sure that their uh, strategies are intact because none of the social or any of that other stuff makes sense if the strategy is not um, properly laid out. But outside of that, we also do a la carte um, brand campaigns. So like, you know, things for, but that includes like video, photo, strategy, the graphics, all all the moving parts of a brand uh, campaign, as well as, you know, working with their team to ensure that um, the objectives are being met for the campaign. And then we have our digital store. Our digital store has templates. There are eBooks and other things that are there to really help brands who may not necessarily have the budget to work with us, but they still definitely want to learn how they can uh, get their brand up to par and have tools and resources that can, you know, design wise, help them do that and be presented properly, et cetera. Mm. That's amazing. Like a a great suite of products. And I love the fact that you have the options for people who don't have the budget, but then who do want to, you know, delegate him this off. And that brings me to my next point. Can you talk about the benefits of outsourcing this process versus doing it yourself? Oh, definitely. So one, you get your edges back. (laughs) Two, um, you get to operate in the space that you were meant to operate in. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that I realized (laughs) as a business owner in this specific space is that, you know, we weren't, nobody is taught how to be CEO. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, once you get in this space, you start realizing and understanding things when you're in the middle of experiencing them. And one of the things is that, you know, you do a lot of things that you don't want to do or that you don't like to do and that you're not good at. And delegating things like this allows you to just focus on what you're good at. Um, And again, that saves your edges, saves your time, saves you extra trips to your therapist makes life easier and it allows you to get, you know, the proper results that you're looking for versus you trying to, you know, piece it together or anything like that. You know, getting the the specific help that you need at whatever level um, that you need it at um, is definitely imperative. You you don't want to want to, especially if it's available to you, to try to just do it yourself. Um, it's it's not necessary. Um, people who have that whole I don't know myself it won't be right or whatever mm-hmm. I mean I don't even remember how the saying goes anymore because I'm so <laughs> far removed from it but, right uh, it's that's not that's not the way you want to uh, be uh, you mm-hmm. want to be able to work with other people who can who are better than you <laughs> mm-hmm. and who can help you really get to you know where you're trying to get to who can help you change the lives of the people's lives that you're trying to change Yes, love that. And more to saving the edges and, you know, the fellas, no more going bald. So listen, we love that. (laughs) And Diamond, any stories are of your clients that stick out like transformational stories that you would love to share? Um, Actually, I can share like a very, very recent one. And actually, Mm -hmm. I saw it. I saw it this morning. So um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the brand Donata, but Donata is a skin and hair holistic brand um mm-hmm. of course black owned woman owned but they um this weekend this past weekend they uh had their rebrand i went down to miami to celebrate with them um mm-hmm. and they launched out you know to their customers and everything um i think yesterday 
they showed everybody like their new packaging, like the full uh, scale of their new packaging. And obviously everybody loves yeah. it. You know, the new brand, everything looks good. It's bomb. People are loving it. But one thing that really stood out to me was that um, somebody in the comments was like, you know, I love it. Just take all of my money now. Mm. Uh, and it just spoke to how something mm-hmm. as simple as updating your packaging can make somebody want to throw their wallet mm-hmm. in. I mean, that's a very, that's an extremely small, you know, win, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, it is a win and it speaks to the greater, um, it speaks to the greater good of what having proper branding can really do for your business. Mm-hmm. Love that. That is beautiful. Oh, I love that. Now let's get into you and just how are you making sure that in the midst of all of this running a business, how do you make sure that you stay organized, that you stay on top of things? So any tools or resources that have helped you to do so? So one thing that I like to do is keep things lean. Um mm-hmm. I'm a simple person and I like things to be simple. So I don't use a whole bunch of stuff. There was a point in time where I almost fell down the rabbit hole of you need this, you need that. Mm -hmm. And the reality is you need what fits you and your team to work efficiently and get the job done. And that's it. So things that I use, um, I use ClickUp. ClickUp is my project management and uh, people management tool. That's where all me and all my uh, team members, we come together, we have our tasks, you know, the operations assistant, she's able to go through and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. We're able to comment to each other, et cetera, et cetera. ClickUp is, is pretty agile and you're able to like make all types of different setups with it, visuals, you know, views. It's dope. Mm-hmm. Um, I also use Slack. Everybody knows what Slack is. And if you don't know what Slack is, Slack is a communication platform a chat communication platform for you to be able to speak to people. There are all types of Slack groups, but yeah, we we definitely use Slack to communicate with one another easier. We also use Google Business Suite. For Google Business Suite, um, we have obviously like our Google Drive there. That's where we store all of our uh, client documents and uh, documents for, you know, the business itself, you know, our important documents. We also use Google Sheets. That's where we um, store and share data. We also use Google Meet. That's also where businesses emails come from. You know how I'm able to assign everybody an email is through my Google business suite. We also, our website is on Wix. So we use the full suite of Wix back there. And Wix has definitely evolved over the years. I've been using them since like 2015 or 2014. So a really long time, but with them, we're able to do our our emails. We're able to obviously sell products. We're able to inform people. We're able to, you know, use like their chat bot so people can get information, all, all types of things on, on Wix. And I think, what else do we use? We use Loom. Loom is a, a, a video messaging platform that allows you to save time having meetings by being able to just send somebody a video that's explaining whatever you want to talk about, which is definitely saves time. I'm a person that doesn't like to, uh, I don't like to have unnecessary meetings and I don't like mm-hmm. to have unnecessary conversations with people. <laughs> Same. I was just talking to my husband about it this morning. Like I'm literally just not like, I like not talking sometimes. <laughs> so yes. um, the less that, you know, we can not talk and the more efficient we can be with our processes is the better. Mm-hmm. So um that's basically, I think, all the things we use. We were using Dubsado, but we actually don't even use Dubsado anymore. It's literally just ClickUp, um, Slack, Loom, the Google Business Suite. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we use Zoom every once in a while, too, but y'all know mm-hmm. what Zoom is. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some great resources. I'm definitely going to put those in the show notes so people can check them out. Ooh, last one. Last one. Uh huh. Yes. So automations, um, Zapier and it's another one called make make used to be called integral mat, but, um, you know, Zapier allows you to connect, uh, apps together. Mm-hmm. Integral mat slash make also does the same thing, but, um, make is a very much more robust version of Zapier and you can do a lot more things with it. So if you're more like tech savvy, if you like geeking out on stuff like that, you can definitely try to check out um, 
make to be able to make some connections and create some really cool automations that um, will be helpful in streamlining your business. Um, but yeah. Mm, I'm going to definitely check that one out. I've heard of, well, we use Zapier as well. Um, so I like, I like, I'm going to check out Make. Uh, so that's a great one. It idea. is different. And also uh, ChatGPT. Don't sleep on that. That's well said. We've been on that too. I love it. These are some great resources. And I feel like I like what you said in terms of like simplifying the tech. Um, because also it, people who are listening are small business owners. So a lot of those things, those costs can add up. So don't use what you don't need. It's yeah. Okay. Love that. And what is the best risk that you've taken? Oh, child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, honestly, starting this company. Um, because in the middle of me, like, growing, mm-hmm. regrowing my uh my hair company, I said, I wanna do this. So I'm gonna put this to the side. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go one hundred percent all in on this and I'm mm-hmm. going to grow it. Um and literally I did that at the end of twenty nineteen and by the end of twenty twenty I had grown it to six figures. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely uh I would say that was the best the best risk that I took. Mm. I love that story. And finally, what does it mean to you to be black in business? What it means to me to be black in business. That's a great question. It means to me that I am an example. I'm not an outlier, but I am definitely an example of what's possible and what it can be in, you know, what can be accomplished, like being somebody who, um, you know, has a, a, a design studio that's partnered with Amazon and been featured in black enterprise and whose clients have been, you know, featured in these prestigious publications and things. Mm-hmm. We are an example of what can be done. Um, as a black woman owned branding studio, and I want, I'm, you know, I'm glad that, you know, I am one of the examples of that mm-hmm. because I mean, honestly, that, that's what it means to me that we're, I'm able to, you know, step up in a, in a white male dominated space because that's what design is. It's a white male dominated space. Um, and I'm able to have my own lane there and stay there and really shine in that space. Mm. I love that. Beautiful. Diamond, this has been amazing. People who are listening are going to want to know how can they find you? How can they support you and how can they work with you? So please do share. Of course, you guys. So if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at the diamond spikes. Um, You can follow me on Facebook as well. Um, I think my name on there is Diamond Sands. It might be spikes too, but either way, you'll you'll know <laughs> when you see me. Um, on Instagram, you can also follow the company is DS Creative Design Studio. LinkedIn, same thing, Diamond Spikes, and yeah, our website is www.dscreativedesignstudio.com, and that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diamond, so much again for being on the show, for pouring into my audience, and all the work that you're doing. We are here to support you, and thank you again for being on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another amazing conversation and so many nuggets in one episode. I love that Diamond said people over data. So get in tune with your audience. And I also like that Diamond mentioned do the hard work now and set the proper foundation in the beginning. Check out more information about Diamond and the resources she mentioned by visiting blacktobusiness.com forward slash 146. Thank you so much for listening, for showing up for yourself and allowing Black to Business to be a part of the journey. And I will chat with you next week, same time, same place.